Hey, I want to talk with you right now about this thing, the fundamental theorem of calculus. F T O C, the fundamental theorem of calculus. It is just such a spectacular theorem, my friends. It is just such a spectacular theorem. Um, it tells us that um, if I take a function f, any integrable function f, um, or I can do that limit of the Riemann sum thing, and I actually get a sensible thing back out. If I take any function f and I integrate it from c to x, that is to say, I use this action right here to define a new function, right? It defines a new function, capital F of X, right? It defines a new function, capital F at X. Um, and then I take the derivative of the function that I get as a result of integrating. I get what I started with, F of X. I... I don't know how to convey to you how truly amazing I think this uh, this theorem is. Like if I integrate, whoop, and then I differentiate, I get the same function I started with. What? What? That is just so incredibly amazing. Um, so I wanted to do the fundamental theorem of calculus with you on a concrete function. So. Let's do the fundamental theorem of calculus in a concrete function. And the first thing that I'm going to do is define a new function, capital F of X. So um, let's choose a function, lowercase f to integrate. Um, what's your favorite function? Oh, what's that? It's sine of X. Okay, cool. I don't know what your favorite function is, but you have to choose something. And this is not an interactive video. So, yeah. Okay, so let's go F of x is equal to sine of x. Now note in particular um, that this thing right here has u as the variable. It's a placeholder variable because it's not going to appear in the final expression because um, we're going to substitute in x and c in the place of u. Um, but the name of a variable is arbitrary. Um, so there's nothing special about x. So if f of x is sine of x, then f of some variable called u is called uh, um, is sine of u, right? But we're taking sine of x, now we're taking sine of u. All right, so we're gonna be computing the integral from c to x of sine of u du. Okay, so um, when we integrate, what we're, what, the mission that we're on, and integration is generally much more difficult than differentiation. When, when we integrate, um, we're going to um, think of, well, what's the function I would take the derivative to, to get the thing back? Um, what's the antiderivative of sine of u? The antiderivative. Okay, so I remember this. There's this circle. There's this circle where it was like sine, cosine, minus sine, minus cosine, sine, cosine, minus sine, cosine, sine, sine, uh, cosine, blah, 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 blah. So it went sine, cosine. Um, so if I take the derivative of cosine, I, uh, of, of minus cosine, I get sine. The if I take the derivative of minus cosine, I get sine. Here, let's just put this down. Sine, cosine, minus sine, minus cosine. This is the ddx arrow. So following this outer arrow is me taking derivatives. That's me taking derivatives. So if I take derivatives, I go in this direction. Integration goes in the other direction. So I have I have sine, and I I, I want to get he, like I got to sine from whatever the antiderivative is. So we're going to walk this arrow backwards. It must have been minus cosine. It must have been minus cosine. This thing here is equal to minus cosine of u. And now we're going to harken back to. Um, that vertical bar evaluation stuff that we've done a couple of times earlier, um, evaluated from C to X. And if you want to put little reminders about what you're substituting away when you do that, those are U equals. So integral of sine of U du from C to X is minus cosine of U evaluated from U equals C to U equals X.
you should practice reading these things as you do them. Um, all of these symbols can be read and narrated um, into spoken English. And I think that if you're not narrating these things, if you're not reading it to yourself, um, then you're not getting the whole picture. Like you really do need to like read these to yourself, read these to a Robert Ducky, read these to a friend um, in order to really get the full experience of doing this. That's a critical part of mastery is reading this stuff out loud. So when we do, um, when we do this um, vertical bar evaluation thing, we evaluate here and then we subtract the evaluation um, at that other point. So that's equal to minus cosine of x minus minus cosine of c. Because wherever I had a u, I replaced an x. And wherever I replaced, uh, whenever I had a u, I replaced a c. Careful on these double minus signs. It's really easy, and I see a lot of students like not do the double minus sign correctly, um, and that's a um, it's it's a common mistake. Okay, All right. So um, so what we just showed is that this integral right here is minus cosine x plus cosine c. The c is just um, as a placeholder for some number. Some number. Um, yeah, okay. So um, so that was the result of me getting that right here. And now I want to show you that when I take the derivative of it, I get the original thing back. So observe, observe my friends, that d dx of minus cosine of x plus cosine of c. We're just taking derivative. Um, C is a constant, so cosine of C is a constant. It's an additive constant. So its derivative is zero. So the derivative of cosine of C is zero. The derivative of minus cosine um, is sine of x, which is just equal to sine of x. Oh, oh my, check out what we just discovered, my friends. We took and we did an integral of something and then we took its derivative, we took the derivative of that resulting integral, and we got back this thing that we started with. Look, sine of u du, sine of x. The integral from c to x, f of u du, take the derivative, f of x. It works. Look, it works. It totally works. If you integrate and then you take the derivative, you get back the integrand, the thing you started with, the function that you integrated. Wow. Thank you.